Hi guys, Asmo here and today I have for you a little bit of an update for the Trickster build I'm making. I'm gonna talk about why I'm playing Trickster, why this Ascendancy and not other, because a lot of people are a little bit confused, they don't know, wait, you made a Raider and now it's Trickster, why is it a Trickster? So I'm gonna answer all of those questions right now, give you a little bit of an update for that, explain the build a little bit and show you examples of full maps, because that's also what people were curious, people were like, okay, so you run quickly through the map, but how do you loot? So hopefully you're gonna see full footage of entire like map uh, so that you can see how the mapping feels on this build. I'm gonna give a little bit of a disclaimer because this is a wacky build and not everybody should be playing it. This is definitely something that uh, you need to think twice before you play. And then maybe I'm gonna talk also a little bit about uh, some currency making strategies as well. So this video is gonna be full of uh, interesting stuff. So first of all, uh, let's talk about Trickster. Why am I playing Trickster? Why am I going Trickster with this build? Um, first of all, this is a mapping build build like purely mapping this is the main focus of this build so for mapping trickster gives us several advantages so if we look at just the ascendancy points right that uh, happen to fit this build so first of all we have the patient reaper patient reaper gives us more region for life mana and energy shield both of like all of these are important right life mana and energy shield, all of these are actually important for me especially the mana and mana on kill that allows me to be able to cast with an insane amount of speed and even if i have a little bit of a uh, mana cost on this I'm still going to be able to regen so much mana and recover so much mana on kill. So this is amazing. This is so much recovery for me that is very, very important. We've got attack and cast speed everywhere on these small nodes as well, which is super helpful because we are casting, but also shield charging, right? So that helps us as well. We have power charge generation as well, which is super important because it allows us to crit more. If we crit, we are applying shock and freeze and we're able to uh, shatter enemies. This is also super powerful. So I definitely want to make sure that I have a lot of power charges and frenzy charges, easy way to generate them without having to use blood rage as well. On a raider, we can only generate frenzy charges, but we cannot generate power charges. So this is the massive advantage of this. And because we're uh, just purely focusing on mapping, we're constantly killing. So these benefits like on kill, on kill, Trickster is perfect for mapping. For bossing, you have to play like a channeling skill and this doesn't do much for you. However, if you're mapping, these nodes are super powerful. So this is like a just ascendancy made for mapping. Another thing that we can do is benefit from the harness the void because uh, the extra uh, damage, extra chaos damage as known chaos, it applies for uh, entirety of our lightning damage, but also we're converting half of that to cold. And because of that, that cold is also also benefiting from that so that's like 150% effectiveness of that node because we're converting like 50% of our damage um, so this is a really powerful node in terms of the damage it gives us a lot of damage and compared to Raider Trickster actually gets more damage output so it's faster actually because of the uh, uh, attack speed and because of the charges it has better recovery and also better damage overall but on top of that also very importantly uh, escape artist allows us to get more evasion and more energy shield and it allows us to stay with impulsa and go low life because we are already around these nodes like we're always going to be next to here because we need to pick up the uh, extra intensity for our uh, pinpoint support because that's like uh, how much damage that's like 20 percent more damage this this node so this is an insane node if you're using a uh, pinpoint or something with intensity so we can pick up pain attunement and get 30 percent more spell damage when on low life we're gonna be low life through reserving like a discipline aura we're gonna just rely on energy shield and because of the fact that we are trickster impulsa is gonna give me a hundred bonus energy shield so it's gonna be like 230 energy shield at least and it's not that much so this build is not gonna have a lot of energy shield but but it's still much better than not having it and for mapping and while picking up shrines getting even more energy shield is going to be totally fine so this is another reason and also a goal because it has all the energy shield gonna give us also evasion right so it works uh, both ways so this is a very very nice node as well that allows us to go low life and how are we gonna go low life with impulsa right that's the thing because we're playing soul thirst because we're extending our flask duration we're actually going to use the curse skating elixir and the curse skating elixir with 28% quality with 
uh, like 100% increased duration uh, enchant on it from the enkindling orb is able to be up to like one minute more than one minute if we uh, get another passive right because we're gonna be using also another potentially another cluster jewel if we get even more flask duration we're going to be able to extend this to like a minute so this course getting elixir will basically replace our ruby flask and it gives us 50% fire res less fire damage taken and then uh, one minute basically basically of chaos immunity and we can use it twice so two minutes of chaos immunity uh, not immunity but like chaos doesn't bypass energy shield so basically the mod that you can find uh, on shavs right so that's what we're going to be doing that's another reason why we are going trickster so trickster is one of my favorite ascendancies is very very powerful and uh, it's uh, extremely unpopular if you look at poe ninja on the one week uh, one week after the leak start, 0.1%. Absolutely nobody is playing Trickster. Uh, it's like the least played Ascendancy, even though it's super powerful for multiple archetypes. It's powerful for this archetype. It's powerful for another archetype. Just to give you like a little teaser, I'm going to be working on a build uh, that's going to be Poison, uh, yeah, Poison, Cyclone, Trickster, uh, which is going to use Temptation Step. It's going to self-poison. Uh, and it's going to basically just also also it's gonna self chill so it's gonna be like self chill self poison poison cyclone build i found like an absolutely disgusting thread of hope which grabs so much damage over time claw nodes poison damage over time a perfect agony po like just absolute the most disgusting thread of hope that i've ever seen and then also the new jewels allow me to pick up toxic delivery so we're gonna be uh, abusing elusive with crit scaling uh damage over time from crits also we're getting 25% more uh, damage from this node plus the 2% flat crit it's an absolutely insane node to pick up with trickster to get with like prolonged pain and, uh, and stuff like that so and also with the arcane is gonna make our cyclone uh, cost zero mana and swift killer is gonna give us power charges and frenzy charges on single target because we're gonna be channeling absolutely freaking insane but uh, that's gonna be later i also have a pob for the build that i'm playing right now it's gonna be in the description all the pobs are gonna be in the description for the soul thirst spark uh, but a word of warning for this build this is a pretty convoluted build that definitely requires that you know what you're doing because you're not going to be able to copy exactly what i have here and if you're not going to be able to copy it some things are just not going to work for you like for example you're going to be like okay so you're using omniscience and then uh, you're going to use like a void battery right so let me put void battery for example here because that's what i'm going to be using so if i put void battery here just a regular void battery and i swap it for this one now suddenly i cannot use it right it says uh, 980 omniscience required to use it and i only have 774 right so how do i how do i how can i use this one but cannot use the other one well this one has an enchant 40 percent reduced attribute requirements and good luck getting that one this one was chanced uh, by one of my viewers actually i paid 10x for it i like i tweeted that i'll give 10x to anybody who can chance this i tried to chance it the person uh, who did it got it in like 200 tries so easy money for them i guess the uh, the one i tried to i spent like 4,000 chance orbs and scours and i still didn't get it right on the prophecy wand but you need to find a prophecy wand from heist that is enchanted with this already and then chance orbit into void battery that's pretty much one of two ways the other way is to buy the orbs uh, that uh, re-roll the enchantment on the item but they're like 2x each and you're gonna need a lot of tries for this right so potentially you, you can spend like 100x and not get it because there are tons of weapon enchants and you might not get the right one um so that's one thing that might stop you from being able to follow this build the build is also uh very reliant on the flasks so that's not also a playstyle that is um uh, that is like pleasurable for everybody like not everybody finds this like comfortable some people are like wait i'm on a timer i'm on like a one minute timer and then i go to a boss and i don't have flasks like if you if you don't uh, feel comfortable playing with this just don't play it soul first is a very specific playstyle that is extremely abusive and cheesy and can do some crazy stuff but it needs to be something that you want to be playing and you need to make sure that you're uh, doing it the right way so there are some specific requirements and specific items that you might not be able to get so take a look at the pob uh, i don't know exactly the cost because i'm still going to be buying all of the parts but the cost is 
not that high, but it really adds up very quickly if you want to do it specifically like this. And the return you get from that is very pitiful. Like the return you get from that is actually very, very weak. The build without the Soul Thirst buffs is like 2 million DPS, which is nothing for the amount of investment we're putting in it. You can get much better uh much better results for your investment however the point is like we're we're getting to, we're getting like a thousand percent increased attack and cast speed while we're mapping and because of that our actual damage while mapping and while reaching a boss is like 16 million damage or even or even double that or triple that depending on how many stacks you get sometimes you get 400 500 stacks and if you're zooming through the map you're going to be absolutely melting things right but without the uh, soul eater stacks it's nowhere near as strong. Soul Eater is like the main power of this build and it's all that the build is built around. Um, so these things are gonna be very tricky for you. You also might find uh, problems in like, okay, my mana cost is too high. My mana cost is too low. My mana cost, like there are so many different things that you need to solve, which uh, have to be solved with, for example, uh, things like where do we have this or so reduced mana cost of skills during flask effect on flask right so enchants like this you need to have 28% flasks which all the people are not gonna want to have you need to have uh, you need to remember that this flask gives you the region you need to manage your leech you're playing with ghost reaver there are so many different elements to this build that are super specific and if you change something in the build you might have uh, very different results so uh, this is uh, something that you should play on your uh, own risk, your own responsibility, because it's a complicated build. I'm happy to answer any questions in the comments and on the Discord, so you can uh, check out our Discord and join there if you want to ask any questions about the build. But that's basically it. You can see uh, in the background the footage of uh, me mapping, and basically my mapping strategy, the strategy that I have for making currency is as follows. As follows. So I have two characters. One, which is this one, which runs maps ex extremely quickly. And the other character is my starter, which was Poison's Concoction. So the Poison's Concoction build can do more or less any content in the game. It can do everything. So uh, the Poison's Concoction build uh, takes uh, up the tasks that this build cannot handle. So what I do is I load up like a bunch of strands. I load up like 20, 30 strand maps. Uh, I roll them and then I just run them with a couple of sack frags and like cart, like polished cart or scarab or something. Just so that I can sustain my maps very easily. And that's basically it. I Sometimes I roll sextants. Most of the time I don't bother. I just run these maps as quickly as possible. I pick up domination for extra shrines and whenever i have i pick up like maybe beast mission or something like that and i just run these maps extremely quickly the main profit from these maps because i run the red influence are the embers so for example grand eldritch embers it's like 13 of them sell for like an x uh, eldritch chaos orbs eldritch exalted orbs influenced maps because you're killing a lot of map bosses you're getting a lot of conqueror maps shaper maps elder maps so you're gonna be able to sell that for a lot of money uh, regular maps as well you're gonna be able to sell for extra profit and a bunch of scarabs so those are the main profits and every now and then you're gonna drop an x you're gonna drop some valuable item because you're running so many maps uh, you're actually making a lot of currency by just like if you have a very strict filter you're gonna have a much better time because you don't want to pick up too much you you want to clear a map in one minute or two minutes right so uh, like one flask activation or two flask activation usually it's like one and a half minutes that i end up killing uh, everything in the map so i kill everything uh i kill the boss and then clear the rest of the map and it's like one and a half minutes because i still have like half of the flask duration left um, so that's usually how long it takes me to clear a map and then you're selling also the invitations right all the invitations that you find from the boss the invitation for the searing exarch which sells for like 80 chaos or something like that right now uh, there are also the smaller invitation sells for a decent money as opposed to the other one and it is true that you get less altars however you still get juicy maps with many many altars in the red influence and the good thing is that the things that you're picking up are more valuable and the less of them drop so it ends up being about the same money as the blue influence but you're actually picking up less stuff so 
you actually are making more money because you're running the maps faster and you're getting more of the uh, drops from the map bosses and so on right which are the invitations conqueror maps and so on which are big money and big amount of currency and then extra thing that i'm picking up also is all the heist stuff and the fragments that i need for the uh, recipes for the arch nemesis so i run uh, the recipes on another character so on this character i just pick up the fragments that i need to make like eight juicy recipes with like um triant horde temporal uh, rejuvenating and mirror image or maybe assassin or something like that and i run those on the other character and i run heist on the other character so i just basically collect them on the fast mapper uh, and run them on the poisonous concoction the poisonous concoction character is running heist so i'm running contracts and i'm running blueprints contracts i'm only running the things that gianna needs for the reveals and blueprints i run everything that's decent so pretty much everything that's not enchanted armaments everything except for enchanted armaments is nice to run and you don't need to reveal all of the rewards you just need to run to the end of the uh, thing and pick up whatever reward you get so like i made a lot of uh a lot of currency by selling the alternate quality gems uh, a little bit by selling some replicas but the replicas are more like you hit a jackpot or you don't you know you hit like replica alberon's warpath or whatever the boots and you get like 30x or you don't right uh, but you also basically they just pay for themselves every single time it's very easy to make currency and you make a bunch of currency from stacked decks as well um, and then you get also even more heist stuff from running the recipes because the temporal uh temporal bubble or whatever it's called gives you a lot of uh, blueprints contracts coins as well as also the currency for expedition so i made a lot of currency selling expedition currency as well without doing a single expedition encounter this league and so that's basically uh, all when it comes to my mapping strategy i find it very nice it's like a rotation of a couple of different things that i'm doing and if i had a bossing character maybe i would also run my own bosses and just like uh, do the conquer ma conquer maps and stuff like that and kill bosses but you can have like a really nice gameplay loop with all of this stuff so i'm gonna be uh investing now uh, my currency into this character and uh, make it a little bit nicer because it already can do t16 maps very quickly i don't know what's the point really of investing into it but i'm gonna make it so that it can do it i guess faster with more juice maybe we'll do it with delirium as well we'll see if we can do like uh, a bunch of delirium orbs on these maps or maybe delirium mirror from the sextant something like that so that we can just make even more currency uh and that's basically it hopefully this is helpful uh, for you you're gonna find all of the pobs for these characters in the description thank you guys for watching and see you next time